My friend James is a bike fitter and here are 10 products that he really doesn't like. This was designed by Gilberto Simone on a serviette. Seemingly the only thought process in it was bellissimo, but you've then got to put a human being's genitals on it. It's very, very long, it's very, very flat, it lacks any pressure relief channel. A lot of people say, oh, it's great because it allows you to change position, which is a little bit like an engine moving inside of an engine bay. How effective and efficient would that be? Most people sit off to one side, they sit on the nose, they sit all over the place on this thing. At no point in a human being's history where it was a human intended to sit on the genitals on a hard piece of foam. Get rid of it, I hate it. Back in the mid to late 80s, uh, there was an epidemic in patellofemoral knee injuries in professional cycling. And it wasn't realized until many years later that it directly coincided with the introduction of the look black cleat. Fixed cleats, no, it is not allowed. There are a number of things that go on inside of a knee, such as tibial rotation, that, that will not allow a foot to be fixed. Many people use uh, a fixed cleat as a means of getting away from the idea of swimming around the side of the, sh the shoe. This is created by poor shoe fit, lack of arch support, poor cleat location, and not enough foot correction. These are inherently dangerous for your knees. They're probably gonna cause you foot problems as well. Shimano do a fixed cleat as well, which is red. Um, just no. 3T seat posts. There are two that are rubbish. This is one of them. I was trying to find the other one in our eBay box, but uh, it doesn't look like it exists anymore. I'm hoping that someone set fire to it. This one's rubbish because it never stays level. You can never do it up properly and it inevitably comes loose. The other one is called an Ionic, which basically has two opposing chambers that fit inside one another, which basically mean that the saddle is always pitched excessively nose down or excessively nose up. If, it's three, if you've got a seat post with 3T written on it, take it out, set fire to it, and put something else in. What was that? 025 team. It's crap. The specialized power. It's too f***ing wide. It comes out too wide, it's got no nose. The biggest problem with this is the flare angle, seemingly. What it means is that the whole thing is just too wide. Most people will end up catching their thighs on the wings of the saddle, which means that they gravitate to the nose. It's a noseless saddle. If you gravitate to something that's noseless, you're not gonna get any support. This is going to be very unpopular with some people. Uh, this is the worst pedal system on the market. It is the highest maintenance, it's the most expensive, it's the least stable, that C-spring that locks them in place, it's done after a thousand miles. And since the idiots of Wahoo took them over, they've done away with axle extensions, base plate extensions, and all of the things that were actually beneficial to speed play users. Cleats as well are 75 quid. Really? Also, typically, larger riders almost always have foot problems and knee problems as a, are associated with this, with this system. A lot of people say it's a bike fitter's dream, it's a bike fitter's nightmare. You don't need this much adjustment. Proprietary one-piece or integrated cockpits. There's actually nothing wrong with them. The problem is the fact that they typically don't fit anyone because it, it still comes with, it, with it, uh, you know, an average size bike still comes with a 42 centimeter bar, which is too wide for most men. Or a women's bike comes with a 40 centimeter bar, which is too wide for most women. And the stem is too long or potentially too long or is too short. And then to replace them comes at great expense. So I think this is a gripe with just the bike industry as a whole really, all the more reason to fit first and buy later. Whilst we're on the subject of proprietary, non-round seat posts. Yeah, all right, they might be aero, but when you've got to replace the thing, it comes, again, massive cost. I had a young lady in here the other day who needed to change to an inline seat post on her Diverge or Roubaix or whatever it was, and she didn't want to spend 230 pounds on a D-shaped seat post. So, please, please, there's nothing wrong with the 27.2. Shout out to one very uh, careful brand, Viello, who do use a D-shaped post, but guess what? You can 27.2 in it as well. Hallelujah. You could probably even put a dropper in it as well. Very, very wide handlebars for more control. They create a litany of biomechanical, or, or sorry, a litany of ergonomic problems. Namely, numb hands, neck and shoulder issues, inability to reach the brake levers, which results in less control. 
and uh, I personally believe that it is completely unnecessary. There's a bit of a move to having a bit more flair to them. I've never had problems descending on a 40 centimetre bar off-road. Uh, so, I, yeah, I, I don't get it. I don't get this. The only argument for it potentially is so we can get more, you know, more space for a handlebar bag in the front. But again, you know, we've done bikepacking trips with narrow handlebars and didn't have problems with, bike pack, with, with handlebar bags. So, yeah, stupid. Gives you none hands, gives you neck and shoulder issues. I don't think it works. How wide should they be? As wide as your shoulders. We've done a video on that. The Shimano R540 pedal system. Uh, we don't have a pair here because I usually rip them off, set fire to them and have a ceremonial burning, burning of them. But they look like this. For a few pounds more, when you're buying these things online, for a few quid more, buy the R550. Yes, it's a plastic body rather than an aluminium body, but the problem with the R540 is that the cleats seemingly don't fit the pedals, the pedal very well. As a result, they rattle around inside the pedal body, which is destabilizing the foot. These are way better, and like I say, for an extra few pounds, well worth the extra investment. This is the Shimano R550, which is, like I said, the next model up. Four foot wedging, or at least unnecessary four foot wedging. So if somebody possesses, so these are intended to treat what's called four foot varus, which we discussed in a, in a video, uh, in another video, but fundamentally these scents seem to eat up a lot of space inside of the shoe that don't really seem to solve many issues I've come to find uh, other than just creating numbness. Furthermore, 99% of the time the thickest part should be on the inside of the foot under the ball of the foot. If the thickest part's on the outside of the foot, alarm bells should be going off. Do a lot of bike fitters put these in people's shoes then? Yes. I take these out of people's shoes all the time uh, from people who are getting numb feet and like hot foot and knee pain and saddle problems and you take this out and all of those problems disappear. That marks the end of today's episode of Bike Fit Tuesdays or was it really an episode of Bike Fit Tuesdays? Was it just James moaning about bike stuff? If you want to book a fit with him, there'll be a link in the description down below. Thanks for watching and see you guys. I promise soon. I won't be as angry as I have been today in a fit though. Would you not? No. I'm quite nice in real life.